What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Barmine Tech and I decided that today we're going to be going over what I run in my home lab. So at the beginning of the year I did a video of what I currently run in my home lab and the hardware I'm using. We're a little more than halfway through the year and a lot of that video has changed and I've either switched over what kind of hardware I use, the servers I'm running, and some of the services I self-host. So I decided to remake this video and we're going to go over some of the stuff that I'm still hosting in 2024 so let's get right into it. So first we'll just go through my flame dashboard. So this is an older dashboard that I've been running for a while. I just haven't gotten around to moving all over to like Homer or Heimdall. Um, they were dashboards that I did like better, but I just never got around to actually switching over to them yet because I've been busy on other projects. Things that I still do run though is my portainer. Uh, definitely still run everything out of there. I have multiple instances and we'll go over to this in more detail. I have my QNAP NAS that runs my Plex server and all the stuff that goes along with it. I have the stuff that goes along with my Plex server. I have my WireGuard server, the Overseer server, Uptime Kuma. I have my old Proxmox server. This is my old tower server that I built out a couple of years ago. I've mentioned it a couple of times on the channel and we're actually going to be talking about this again today. My old Pi-hole instances that I've actually migrated one over and this one doesn't exist anymore. Octoprint, uh, Duplicity, which isn't being used anymore, as well as your backup. So Octoprint is being used here and there when I do print. We did talk about this. We made a video of how to set it up on a Raspberry Pi a while back. Uh, I just don't print as much anymore, so I haven't really been using Octoprint. And these two are just old. Like I said, I haven't updated my dashboard because I've just been busy on projects and everything else. But ever since I moved over to my Asus Store file NAS, I no longer have a need for these anymore and we'll talk about that NAS as well coming up next. Outside of that dashboard, like I said, it's not currently up to date so there are some other stuff that I do run like the Proxmox backup server and the Asus Store file NAS. Now if you don't recall the Asus Store NAS that I'm talking about is the one that Asus Store sent over. I did a couple of videos with it talking about how to set up Plex and everything else. So I'll put some links below so you can check that video out. And that's actually how I showed off how to set up Plex on a NAS. But that's enough of that. Let's start going back into what I'm hosting. I think we'll start off with Uptime Kuma because this is my network monitor that I use in the house and this also sends Discord alerts letting me know when stuff goes up and down. Um, so you can see over here I just have some of my nodes and it just set to go out to a ping to make sure everything comes up and down. So you can see over here the Barmine tech server is down that's because it's offline so I just pause the alert but Uptime Kuma is really helpful and I, I found it really useful to use especially when I'm traveling or I'm out of town. I need to make sure that my services are still up and running. And I'll show you what the Discord alerts look like right now. So if you just take a look over here, you can see actually this is the knock. Let me know about 10 minutes ago that the CA server came back online. That is my tower server. And I'm going to talk about this, about the project I'm working on. But you can see over here just some of the alerts like my Plex NAS went down and then it comes back up and it's just some of the normal stuff like this is what i was doing some maintenance but it's nice because you can get the discord web hook sent straight to you to let you know when stuff's going on and like i said if i'm out of town it's really helpful to have this so i know what's going on in my network the next big one we'll talk about is the proxmox server that i currently am running so it is my mini lab pc and i did a video on this talking about the hp pro desk or elite desk i think it is the g4 that i got this was a mini PC that I built out to be my Proxmox server and it does everything I need and it barely uses any power and it's a small form factor. Actually, it's a mini form factor. So it fits perfectly in my 10 inch server rack and it runs everything I need. So I have some of my VMs running and you can see over here, just nothing really crazy. It does have some decent specs. So I do have the i7-8700T in here. It's just a 2.4 gigahertz, nothing crazy, but it does the job. I have 32 gigs of RAM in there, and then I just have an NVMe, and then a, I have two NVMe drives in here that runs the Proxmox storage, and then I have a 2TB one that does all the storage for my VMs. Super simple, I mean, it just runs my Pi-Hole instances, my Windows 11 box. I have a VM that runs my Docker machine off of it, and then I also have my Kali box when I was doing some schoolwork with my pen testing class. Other than that, that's really all I run off my Proxmox server at the moment. I just don't have any need for anything more. The next thing we're going to talk about is my backup server. So I do run this off of another mini PC. This mini PC originally was being used in my home lab as a bare bones Ubuntu machine that ran Docker and Portainer for me. After a while, I decided against it because I ran into some issues with the actual machine. That's why this machine over here, my Proxmox server came back because I accidentally wiped out my Proxmox host that was running on the physical machine. 
decided to virtualize it again to make it possible to have backups and be able to refresh back to a backup that worked because I can't have my Docker containers going down. They run services like WireGuard and everything else that I need working. So that's why I moved it over to a VM. Uh, we'll talk about that more going forward, but right now we're gonna talk about the backup server. So this was just another build out that I did. I actually used to run my backup server over one of my other tower machines that I ran, but then I decided to move it over to the mini PC because it was just sitting there in the rack doing nothing. It's pretty simple and I have a video about the setup to this. So if you are interested in setting up your own Proxmox backup server, it's really simple. You could probably get done in about 25 minutes. And I have a video that I'll put a link below. But you just see over here, it just does my backups. It's just backing up a handful of my machines and they're there in case I need something to go to. So it's really simple and you know, it's just the Proxmox backup server. Outside of my Proxmox machines, I do run the Docker and Portainer that runs over that VM. And then I have a couple instances of it. So I do have one that runs on a NAS. I have the local one that runs on the VM. And then I also have one that runs on a VPS. This runs Vault Warden. I have a video of how to set Vault Warden up. It's just to self-host your own Bitwarden server. And I'll put a link down below if you're interested in doing this. This has been really nice. And I've been working on getting more secure passwords and migrating it. So only I have control over it. Well, and for the most part. But we'll talk about some of these Portainer instances. So for my local one, this is the one that runs off the VM. It just runs some of the simple stuff for me, like Cloudflare DDNS, my Nginx Proxy Manager, Uptime Kuma, Watchtower when I need to upgrade everything, and then WireGuard Easy. I'm not really going to go into detail about the WireGuard server. It's just a simple WireGuard server, so I have a VPN back to my house. Lately, I actually haven't been using the WireGuard server fully because I've been using Tailscale for the convenience of it. But if I do need to be able to connect back to multiple machines, I do use the WireGuard server because I have it configured for that. I'm not going to really focus on the NAS because it just runs some of the Plex stuff. Other than that, my Vault instance is just running for my Vault Warden and my stuff for that. So we're not going to really go into detail about that. Next, we'll move over to my QNAP NAS. So this is actually my NAS that runs my Plex server off of it. It's nothing too crazy, but I did do some upgrades on it so it has a little bit more storage. So if I come over to control panel, you can see over here, it has the Intel Celeron N5105. It's just a four core, four thread CPU, and I upgraded it to 16 gigs of RAM. I also put a couple NVMe drives in here, and uh, it took a minute to load, but over here in storage and snapshots, you can see I also have two M.2 SSDs in here. So I put these in here for my caching in and out on top of the two 18 terabyte, I believe these are. I think it's 16 usable, but these are 18 terabyte Ironwolf NAS drives. Um, I've been running this NAS for a little over a year and they've used the NAS drives. I do enjoy them because they're NAS quality drives. I don't have to worry about something happening to them, but I learned the hard way that NAS drives are allowed. And by running this NAS on my desk next to my workstation can be annoying at some time when the drives are spinning up and down. But all in all, I really enjoy running my Plex server off my NAS. Other than again, the integration setup to run Docker on QNAP, everything worked out pretty smoothly. That's my Plex QNAP server. Next, we'll talk about the Asus Store file NAS that I set up. So Asus Store sent over this NAS and I did a couple of videos on it. We showed how to set up a Plex server and I think I did like a general overview of it. But other than that, I just made this into a file server. So you could just see over here, I just have some of my info on here. So this is going out to a Samba share. So it's just some of my files, nothing too crazy on it. If I go into my drives over here in store image manager, you can see it's really nothing too crazy. I just have two, two terabyte uh, hard drives on here. I just bought some refurbished Seagate drives that I found on eBay and they work perfectly. I just have it in a RAID so I don't lose all my data. Down the road, I might add some M.2 drives if I start to use this a little bit more, which I think I might because this does have a two and a half gigabit NIC in it. And then maybe I'll upgrade my network so I can get some better speed so I can store some more of my YouTube files on here. I did decide to start archiving some of my data to the file NAS because it's here, it's rated, so I don't have to worry as much. I need to free up some space on my workstation because that is where I stored all my YouTube media. So the file NAS is a mix of my files and my YouTube archive, but that's really it. I don't do anything else on here, but it is capable of doing more. I just use it for a file NAS because that's what it was used for. Some other honorable mentions to what's running in my home lab would be the Zima board. So oh, here we go. You can see it now. Now you can read it. Uh, it would be the Zima board. This was something that was sent over by Ice Whale. I did a bunch of videos on it. We did a Proxmox server and everything else on it. I don't currently run something steadily on this, but I do use it as a testing environment. So if I need to like test out some new software, 
I want to do a quick build out. I do do it over here on the Zima board. It's really handy because I it's a small board. It's about the size of my hand. You know, a little bit bigger. It's an SBC. It's really um, compatible with a lot of different systems. So when it does come time to test out some new systems, the Zima board's really helpful. It's it's simple and set up a whole machine. Of course, it can't run everything that I would want it to do because it doesn't have as much hardware. But for the simple projects, this is great. Another project that is in my home lab that doesn't get as much use as I wish it did would be this Pi KVM. It's a little janky because I never screwed it into the case I made, but it worked out pretty well for some of the uses I had for it. I did do a video of how to build this out if you're interested. I'll link that below. This took me like a month to build out because of trying to find the right hardware and everything I needed to go along with it and then trying to just figure out how to actually get it to work properly. Since then, they've upgraded the software a lot and I think it's a lot simpler. And there's probably better guides like my video that shows you how to get what you need for it. But the Pi KVM is pretty cool. The only issue that I have with it sometimes is like the resolution, it doesn't support Proxmox. So you can't really use it to work on your Proxmox machine, which it was a bummer for me because that's something I was really looking for. But I do know it works with like the Zemo board resolution and probably some of the other mini PCs that are out there. Again, the Pi KVM is really cool because you don't need to keep plug unplugging and plugging in monitors and keyboards and everything else for it to work. It's just a simple couple connections into the one box and then it's all good to go over the network. Other than that, I mean, I really cut down my home lab a lot. I did try to turn off my big tower server that I built, which ended up getting turned back on the other day because I'm going to build out some game servers for me and my friends to play off of it. I don't have them up yet, so I can't really show you what I'm doing, but they'll probably run like a crafty controller server for Minecraft. And it's going to run a VM for 5M because we're going to play some 5M RP for GTA. But other than that, that server is just going to be on and off as I need it for the game servers. And that's about it for that. Nothing else has really changed in my network since the last video. I still use all the same hardware. I use all my switches, the Netgear switches that I've been using. I think maybe I added a PoE switch, but it's nothing too fancy to go over yet. So it won't really get too much detail. But it's about a little more than halfway through the year. And I did make some big changes hardware wise. So I just wanted to make an update video on that and go over some of the services that I host in my environment. So if you do have any questions on anything, you can comment that below. I'll have all the videos for all the projects that I've done. Everything I host in my home lab has a video to go along with it. So I'll try to link all those below. But if you have any questions, you could either comment below or hit up the discord server that I'll have a link below for that as well. But I want to thank you all for watching. If you could like, comment and subscribe, it really helps the channel grow and the videos get out there. Other than that, I will have links in the description to pretty much all the gear I use in my home lab. There'll be Amazon links in the description. And I have an Instagram for the channel. It's called barmine underscore tech. If you go on Instagram, you can just search that up. I've been posting some reels similar to the shorts that you've been seeing on the channel, as well as maybe some pictures of what's going on with the home lab and projects I'm working on. But I just want to wrap this up because I don't want to drag this video on too much longer. I want to thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.